is like all around the world. Unimed for everything. What is math modeling? It's about looking at a problem, right? And approaching it with mathematics and having ownership over the solution process. Take anything you are interested in, you could figure out a way to use mathematics to analyze it or improve it or design something. We're gonna think about cats. This is a poster taken from a Humane Society and this is a problem um, that is a modeling problem that was proposed um, at a different university, but what it says is one pair of unspayed and unneutered cats and their offspring can produce 420,000 cats in seven years. This one says you would end up in six years with 42,409 cats. Very different numbers, right? Uh, so you can maybe think and start questioning, so how many cats are there really? This is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to think about modeling cat populations. We're going to approach this problem using math modeling. There's a process. Like we are, what we're going to do is break down that process of how, I don't call them steps because you don't do an order. I call them components. The math is really on a, another level that I have never experienced before in my life. So what were some of the initial things you thought you'd have to consider? Lifespan. Like how many like born every single year and how many like died every single year? You are the first person to that has I've talked to that's come up with the idea of like you need to know when they die, right? Because it can't be that right. Twenty years down the line, every cat is still alive. Good. How many how many times can a cat have kittens in here? Exactly. Modeling is a process that uses math to represent, analyze, make predictions, or otherwise provide insight into real-world phenomena. To model, you'll combine creative thinking and math skills to define and develop the solution to your problem. We're going to go through these components of the modeling process together. So say there are no wrong answers. When you're brainstorming, even the craziest of ideas should be written down because that may be called innovative later. So don't neglect ideas. Begin by refining the idea into a concise problem statement, and explaining exactly what your model will predict. What I want you to do is research a little bit. Think about the situation. What influences this problem? Remember when I said real world problems are complicated? One way to simplify the process is to make assumptions. If you reduce the factors that affect your model, you can focus on what's really important. These are questions that you're asking during the brainstorming process that are gonna lead you into deciding what to include in your model. So how are we gonna make a model that's general? How would we do that? We're gonna have to make some assumptions. At some point, you've gotta take something really big and say, okay, I'm gonna make an assumption. Making assumptions are often based on those questions that you ask during the brainstorming process. You wanna write everything down when you're making assumptions. You also want to think about the availability of your resources. I would probably need to go to Google, right? Google tells you everything you need to know, right? So you might need to do some research. You might Google and realize, I cannot find any information on this, so I'm going to have to make an assumption. Thinking differently and learning new things is always cool to me, so I find this really interesting. So the, for the cat problem, it looks like you already started looking up some good stuff. So you said you were thinking. So if you start with two cats and you're trying to figure out how many cats will be there in a few years, what were some of the first things you decided to look up? Well, we looked up like their offspring. How many offsprings they produce in one in one per cat? Yep. How many offsprings? Good. You're on the right track. It's time to think about primary factors affecting the phenomenon you're solving for, like variables and specific units. This component of modeling creates mathematical relationships that become the foundation of your model. The next thing you want to do is think about your variables. You start really formalizing the problem that way. So the purpose of your model is to make a prediction about something, typically. We want to think about what's the output of our model. You want to think about the things you can include and that you can measure. There's some things you might know are very important, but you are not able to get information on those. Okay, so you might say, well, I'm going to set that to a parameter and move forward with what I can get. So you want to identify all these and you want to think about your units. Here's your chance to apply the math you've seen in the classroom on a real world problem. Unlike most of the math you've experienced, getting a solution isn't the last step in the process. You'll see preliminary answers and figure out if your solution really addresses your problem statement. Then you get into getting a solution and this is where 
what you are doing and when you're creating your model, because everyone can come up with very different approaches to something and they're all correct. You might start with something complicated and say, I don't really know how to solve that, so I'm going to simplify it because I've got my own sort of toolkit of mathematics that I can use. Think about that and then you, know, you get a solution uh, based on what you know. Could you use some sort of software, Excel, graphing calculators, mini tab, statistical software, almost everything I do, I'm number crunching on a computer. Now that you've built a model, it's time to honestly assess your approach. Ask yourself, does it answer the question I asked? Is it a feasible solution? Are there situations where the model doesn't work? This component of the process takes a critical eye, and you may need to go back to previous steps, make adjustments, and see if you can improve your results. So at the end of the day, when you make a model, you want to look at what are the strengths and weaknesses of it. So there's this kind of self-reflection and assessment where there's certain scenarios where it wouldn't work. You may realize that in analyzing your work that a better solution comes up. Think about the cat problem. You're going to be able to look up information. What would go into predicting cat population if you started out with male and female unspayed, unneutered cats? Your model may be world changing, but if you don't explain it, no one will ever know how good it really is. This component of the modeling process includes summaries, explanations of each step in the process, and your final analysis. Some modelers also report on avenues not taken or things they could improve if given more time. And then eventually you want to tell someone your answers, right? You want to say, I solved it, I know, the cat situation. And you think about how to communicate the ideas, okay, and how to speak, speak sort of the language of mathematics. You're going to brainstorm about cats. You're going to think about making a prediction. So could you come up with some assumptions, variables, relationships that help you determine the number of cats and how that changes in time? And I want you to crunch out some numbers if you can and we want to compare. So start thinking about all those things that are important and then trying to find some numbers that you can put with them. It requires a lot of deep thinking and it's a little challenging so I like challenges. I'm excited to see what you did today. I hope that you, again, you now have a lens of mathematics. You will look around you things differently. <laughs>